When I was in college, I took a 15,000 volt shock to the left arm that hurt like hell and left my arm numb for a few hours. I'm still here, so evidently I was fine, but going forward, well, let's say I was a lot more cautious with my dorm room laboratory. See, I was constructing a ZVS circuit to power a flyback transformer. For those not into high voltage electronics, that's one of the easiest ways to build a high voltage source without sacrificing too much power output. The reason, of course, was I wanted to build a Jacob's Ladder. You know, these classic mad scientist gadgets that don't really do anything. But this isn't story time. This was all a ploy to trick you into watching an explainer on electrical arcs. See, a Jacob's Ladder functions by taking advantage of the difference between the way an electrical arc forms and how it's sustained. Before an electrical arc can form, you usually need high voltage. Not because high voltage is special, but because high voltage is what's typically required for large electric fields. And electric fields are what drive charges, like electrons and positive ions, to move around. So suppose you have your high voltage circuit like I did. On one wire you have ground, and on the other 15,000 volts. Now, the hot wire produces an extremely strong electric field near its tip, enough to accelerate any stray electrons that are wandering around through the air. And there are stray electrons. Cosmic rays strike Earth all the time, knocking electrons free all over the place. Just usually they don't last very long as they just join up with an atom, but if there's even a single stray electron near the high voltage wire, well, it'll be accelerated one way or the other. So if we take an electrode at high voltage and another that's grounded, that stray electron will be accelerated towards the high voltage wire. In doing so, it will typically slam into some atoms along the way, knocking free more electrons and exciting nitrogen atoms. The newly produced electrons continue along their path towards the positive electrode, repeating the process. But the nitrogen atoms emit light after they've been excited, and that light can knock electrons out of other atoms further away from the positive electrode. Then, because the initial electron has now created a small cascade of electrons flowing towards the positive electrode, the tip of that cascade behaves like a new tip of the wire. So the process stretches out from the wire, growing a streamer towards the grounded electrode and losing power as it does so. But if the electric field is strong enough, the streamer might just reach the other electrode. And when it does so, all hell breaks loose. What was once a strong electrical insulator, air, preventing current from flowing through the wires, is now a spark made of plasma connecting the electrodes. And those conduct electricity extremely well. So current flow through the spark spikes, heating the plasma to thousands of degrees. This is an electrical arc. Now actually sustaining the arc is much easier than forming it. After all, the arc acts like a stretchy conductor, so you don't need particularly high voltage to maintain it. So as the hot plasma rises in the Jacob's Ladder, it's able to stretch across the wider and wider gap, growing the arc until there's just not enough power to heat the air to ionization temperatures and sustain the arc. And then the whole process repeats at the bottom, where the gap is smaller, making it easier for a spark to form. 